We're just about to get started, folks, so if some of you can make your way over to this side of the room, we'd appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's pretty rowdy this morning. We're all excited. Okay, folks, can I please have your attention? There we go. Well, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge all of the excitement in the room. It's fantastic. So, uh, Degana Dasa Niengetz, my traditional name is Degana Dasa. My English name is Ron McCluster, and I am the Executive Director for Truth, Reconciliation, and Indigenization here at the college, and it is my honor to welcome all of you. Uh, I am also honored to be one of two MCs for this morning's event, uh, but before we go down that road, I would really like to introduce Elder Monica Mahash, uh, Mo uh, sorry, Monique Mahash, my apologies is a member of the Algonquins of Barry Lake. She's a knowledge keeper and works closely with Algonquin elders, uh, Albert Dumont and Barbara Hill Dumont. She's also the executive director of Indigenous Culture and Media Innovations, an artist-run multi-arts organization to get it dedicated to the skills development of Indigenous women and youth through the production of arts media. As is tradition, after Monique speaks, <clears throat> Excuse me. She will be followed by drummer Sharp Doppler. Sharp is a member of the Ottawa Indigenous community and is of Cherokee, Sioux, Fox, and Irish descent. She has presented at various venues at local, regional, provincial, national, and international levels. She is honored to be considered a traditional knowledge keeper as well in Ottawa as well as in other communities. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Elder Monique Mahash, followed by Sharp Doppler. Pajashig, welcome. Welcome to our unceded, unsurrendered Algonquin territory. Monique Manach and Dishnikos. My name is Monique Manach, and I'm a member of the Anishinaabe Algonquins of Barrier Lake. And it's a real honor and pleasure for me to be here today. I had the opportunity to have a meeting with Mr. McCluster here the other day and his wonderful team at uh, the Mama Dosen Center. And he said something that really stuck with me. It's been haunting me ever since. <laughs> he said, this is a space where the past, the present, and the future come together in a moment in time. And I thought about how appropriate and how profound that idea is right here in this space. I was raised in Toronto. <laughs> My parents made that de decision consciously because if I had been raised in Barrier Lake, I would have gone to residential school, and I would not be the person standing before you today. But here we are. We're here today in a place where Algonquin College is leading the way in indigenizing programming and spaces. And we have this wonderful opportunity for all of us, Native and non-Native alike, to move into the future where, ideally, treaty rights are honored as simply a way of life, where our ceremonies, our culture, our language, our children are simply respected 
And it starts here, right here today, right now, in this moment where the past and the present and the future all come together. In my language, the word for warrior means protector, someone who protects. And I see that this is a space where warriors can be grown, where they can be born. Not warriors of violence, but warriors with knowledge. Not with contempt, but with kindness. A space where we can all grow together. I'm going to say a few words to the Creator to help open this space. Thank you, Creator. Thank you for bringing these people together, their minds, their hearts, their spirits. Helping to bring this space into fruition. Helping to make possible the type of relationships that can help everyone to grow to be better human beings, to be better warriors, to be better protectors. Kachimigwich, 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 thank you, thank you very much. Ani bojo koe se goskon go na miki mo condition ko smo kondo dem ji jala gi mishko ki ashko ki minu Irish ko bewas o gijda my GST name is Sharp my spirit name is Thunderbear and my people are the Cherokee and Sac Fox people and as you can tell by my deep dark tan my mother was Irish <laughs> I'm Bear Clan and I serve the people as a carrier of ceremony as a helper as a singer as somebody who brings humor. It's an honor to be here today to share a song to charge this place as I was asked by Jackie to fill it with good vibrations. And I'm going to step away from the mic so I don't overwhelm the sound guy.
I just want to tell you, I didn't tell you what song I was going to sing because I didn't know until I started singing, and that song is called The Longest Walk. And The Longest Walk is back to truth and reconciliation. And it starts slow and it's difficult, but as we go along, it gets easier. And that last verse of that song is for those ones in the spirit world who gave everything so that we could be here today. Miigwech. Thank you very much, Elder Manach and Sharp. What a wonderful and I would say most fitting way to begin today, miigwech. So hello everyone, my name is Laura Stamra and I am Vice President of Student Services here at Algonquin College. And I know I speak for both Ron and myself when, when I say we are absolutely thrilled to be asked to be your MC today. It's been a, a wonderful journey to get here and uh, we, we have some wonderful activities today and it is my distinct pleasure to be the first one to say, welcome to the grand opening of the D.A.R.E. District. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a moment also to acknowledge that this event is taking place on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We are very pleased that so many of you could join us. I, I expected a good crowd, but this, I have to say, is exceptional. So we're just so pleased to see so many of you here today. I'd also like to take a moment to, to honor uh, and recognize some of our special guests. And I know I won't get to, to all of you, so please forgive me if, uh, if, if your name is not called. There's just so, so many of you here. Uh, we have our MP, Anita Vandenbelt, and I know she may be... Oh, she's here! Welcome, Anita! <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Great, I know you were running. Thank you. Uh, we have MPP, uh, Bob Shirelli. I know it's here. <laughs> Scanning the crowd for MPP, Lisa McLeod. Did she... Oh, she might be on her way, so I'm sure she'll be here. And of course, Mayor Jim Watson. <laughs> City Councilor Jan Ardern. Marianne Wilkinson. Marianne, there we go. And of course, our own Rick Shirelli. I would also like to uh, extend a very warm welcome to a, a very special partner of ours, uh, our chair of our Aboriginal Ed Education Council, Della Menes. Where are you, Della? Are you, are you here? I saw you. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> welcome, Della. Thank you for making the journey. We're also happy to see uh, so many retirees here. And, come and celebrate as, the, as, uh, as we open these facilities, uh, one of which I know is uh, our past president, Robert Gillett. Where is he? Sixth president, our longest serving president. Is he here somewhere? Uh, also like to welcome Bill Conrad, former vice president of continuing education, one of our retirees. And someone who I know is here because I just said hello. This is Mr. Bill Lee, hired as a novice teacher in 1966 to create cartography program for the Ontario Vocational Center in Ottawa and eventually served as head of the college's survey and mapping department during the 70s. Wonderful to see you here. A warm welcome also to our many post-secondary colleagues uh, who are here today. I know I saw Madame Lise Bourgeois, president of La Cité Collégiale. Thank you. There you are. Dr. Alastair Summerly, president and vice chancellor of Carleton University. And 
and Dr. David Graham, Vice President Academic and Provost at the University of Ottawa. Of course, there's also very uh, special members of our community, the members of the Board of uh, Directors from our foundation, and we have our Chair Rodney Wilson here with us today. Rodney. <laughs> and also many members of our Board of Governors here today as well, and uh, our Chair Peter Nadeau of the Board of Governors. Peter. <laughs> Well, we're very honored to have all our, our special guests and all of you here today uh, to join us in this, uh, in this celebration of uh, our expanded success. And with that, Ron? Well, this is uh, certainly an exciting day. I can't believe we're actually opening the D.A.R.E. district. It's absolutely amazing. Like any new home, uh, there are still a few things to do, uh, so a few things that need to be done, but all in good time. We're just so thrilled to be here with all of you today in this amazing facility. But now that we're actually in the building, it feels like only yesterday the college was putting shovels into the ground on this exceptional project. There are so many people who have worked so hard to bring us here today, and on behalf of the college executive, executive team and President Cheryl Jensen, who will be stepping up here in a few moments, I'd like to say a big thank you to the following groups of people. The DARE District Steering Committee, the College Physical Resource Team led by Todd Shonwell, Ottawa-based Edward J. Kuhachi and Associate Architects, led by Zofia Jerwitz, uh, President and Architect. PCL Construction, led by uh, Remy du Duhim. Uh, Collars Projects Leaders, uh, led by Lucas Smith. And of course, a really big thank you to our government partners. Without their funding, this building would not have been possible. First, a very big thank you for the $21.9 million in funding to the federal government's post-secondary institution and strategic investment plan. And next, I'd like to acknowledge the $2.9 million that has come from the uh, Ontario Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities Facility Renewal Program Fund. This event, this building, this project, and our future would not have been possible without all of those people. Well, we know that was a lot of introductions and a lot of busyness, uh, and important business for sure. Uh, and, but now Ron and I are gonna step away from the microphone for a short while. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce to the stage Algonquin president, our president, Cheryl Jensen. Cheryl. Well, thanks very much, Laura and Ron. Wow, what a, what a crowd. And you know, uh, I'm going to go off script, which always worries Scott, I'll have to tell you, but too bad. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, when we had this opening a little while ago, we were in the library, the existing library. We are now on the ceiling of the old library. This is an additional floor, and this is our new library. And when I started, I'll go through Christina, uh, Sarah, Igor, Victoria, my student association presidents who are the best in the country, said, we need a new library. We're doing cool things, but we're learning in the old way. We need a future-ready library. And uh, I can honestly say it's with great pride and gratitude to my student association presidents, our new president, Dejanel, I'm looking forward to working with, that your leadership has brought us here today. And every student, past and present, and everybody at Algonquin will enjoy using this library. And I won't go into all of the details of it, although I could do that with great enthusiasm. I won't today. Um, so, you know, I have this rule that I don't shorten speeches for retirements or new buildings, so I hope you're comfortable. If you need a seat, there are some seats that we have here, just giving you a little bit of a warning. 
Um, I also always like to have a backdrop of my learners and, uh, and young ones and, and our partners who have built this facility. So feel free to fidget if you need to, to keep your feet, your feet going. Um, there is, uh, Ron mentioned one gentleman, Remy Duhame. Remy, are you here? Where are you? Come up here, please. <laughs> and I have my partners here, uh, my partners in education, and you're going to hear a lot of good things coming from, uh, I think, state-of-the-art unique partnerships between uh, the four post-secondary institutions in Ottawa. Um, Alistair, thank you for being here today. Lise, uh, Lise, this is one of your graduates from La Cité. Where are you? Is he ignoring me? <laughs> come up, come up here for a second. So this gentleman, and there are so many I can, I can bring up here, but Remy is the superintendent with PCL, but he is really the superstar of this project. I mean, if you could have pictured this place in January with 150 tradespeople in here working on different aspects of the building, always being gracious to take us for tours when we wanted to go for a tour, calm as a cucumber even when I wasn't. Um, and so, Remy, from the bottom of my heart and everyone here at Algonquin and in the community, Thank you, and we're so proud that you're an Ontario College graduate. Thank you. Okay, now back on script. <laughs> so, you know, uh, some people have been asking uh, me why we were having this event on May the 3rd. Why did you pick that date? Well, part of it was we wanted to be on time, on budget, substantially complete for the federal government, so we met the criteria for the funding, and we are, we did it. Um, <laughs> But you know, there's other reasons why we're uh, choosing this date as well. And you know, it was just a little over a half a century ago that uh, back in, um, on May 3rd, 1965, that the precursor of Algonquin College actually was born. And it was the, um, the work of people that we have in this room that caused that to happen. And we wanted to, as our elders said, we wanted today to recognize our history, we wanted to recognize the present, but we also wanted to focus on the future. And so let's just talk about a few things that might have happened back in 1965 um, when the Ontario Vocational Centre of Ottawa opened up. It was the same year that the Queen issued a royal proclamation to make the maple leaf our national flag. It was also the year that TransCanada Airlines became Air Canada. And, just because we're in hockey season, the Montreal Canadiens won their 13th Stanley Cup. <laughs> Next year it'll be the Senators. So today we are celebrating this history, and in the opening of our new D.A.R.E. district, we're also celebrating a future that is filled with possibility. Here in the present, we're ready to pursue these possibilities and dare to make them a reality. You know, when I addressed everyone at our groundbreaking that we just talked about, I quoted one of my favorite authors, Dr. Zeus. So in the interests of symmetry and just another excuse to work Dr. Zeus into one of my speeches, I want to remind you of the line from the, mu the movie, the mu musical, Seussical. Think and wonder and dream, far and wide, as you dare. The D.A.R.E. district is a place to wonder, to dream, and of course, to dare. And more than that, it's a place where the dreams of our learners will take flight. Some of you, our guests, may be learning about D.A.R.E. and this name for the first time. So let me assure you, you're going to be hearing a lot more about it in the future, especially if you own or manage a business in the National <coughs> Capital Region. That's because many of our graduates will be working for you and with you. And they will have acquired and honed their knowledge in this incredible facility that has been two years in the making. Right now, as I mentioned, you're standing in our beautiful new library, wired for the latest high-tech learning. Everything from digital literacy labs to student learning centers to help students 
with their math and computer skills, to studios and multimedia presentations. On the lower floors, which I hope you will tour, including where the library used to be, we're also creating areas specifically geared towards exploration, a makerspace area that will allow students to get their hands on the latest technology, and a business incubation center that will be like no other. You know, so much of learning is about discovery, and our D.A.R.E. district has created the space for that to happen. So with that in mind, let me to introduce you to this funny little acronym, D.A.R.E. D.A.R.E. stands for Discovery, Applied Research, and Entrepreneurship. In choosing the D.A.R.E. district, we're saying something about what we hope this exciting new building will become. And we're making a profound statement about who we are as a college. D.A.R.E. captures the purpose of Algonquin College our mission to transform hopes and dreams into lifelong success. Discovery naturally implies learning and innovation, and applied research is a really nice description of the purpose of a polytechnic institution, which is what we are here at Algonquin, and involves our learners with business and industry working on real-world projects. As for entrepreneurship, we're committed to instilling an entrepreneurial mindset throughout the college, in our students and in our employees. So in a nutshell, the college is dedicated to educating learners in innovative research that has entrepreneurial applications in the real world and around the world. You know, words such as innovation and entrepreneurship are kind of buzzwords now in the worlds of education, business, and politics. Everybody, politicians, corporate leaders, school boards, and yes, college presidents like myself, we like to toss these words out in response to questions about how to create a prosperous society to help people lead a fulfilling life. And part of my job is to champion the college's innovation agenda and its efforts to embed this entrepreneurial thinking into our learners and our employees. And I accept this part of my job with great pride. But what does this mean? Do we use concepts like innovation and entrepreneurship too readily without really considering what they mean and why they're important to us? There was a, a consultant by the name of Michael O'Brien who wrote some years ago in, the, in Wired magazine and he said, the overuse of generalization of the term innovation has led to a loss of understanding of what it is we need to say when we say we need more innovation. And if so, then we need to be innovative about our use of the word innovation, <laughs> to borrow his phrase. I wanted to make sure that our center means something to you. I want to make sure that Algonquin was contributing to the innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in Ottawa, which I really believe thrives. We're not trying to do here what others are already doing. We needed to find our niche here at Algonquin. So we started a president's advisory panel as this space was under construction in the very early stages. I asked Terry Matthews, all of you know that name, to co-chair this panel with me. And he also uh, agreed and helped me to bring some real thought leaders to the table, people like Peter Charbonneau, Michael Turner, who's here today from Wesley Clover, Paul Labarge, and that's just to name a few. And we also brought Blair Patekirk from Invest Ottawa and Valerie Fox, who was the founder of the Digital Media Zone at Ryerson University and an Algonquin grad, brought them to the table so that they could help us to figure out, you know, what would that, what would that new center look like? And you know, as we debated through our discussions about uh, what does entrepreneurship mean to uh, Algonquin, I learned that the main key to our success was actually leadership. And that came from our discussions. What do we need to do at Algonquin to show leadership? And how do we put that into the heart of everything we do? And so what we really learned was that we had to instill this entrepreneurial mindset into every single one of our students and every one of our employees to make sure that we're serving Ottawa and the ecosystem. So I want to publicly thank, through Michael, Terry Matthews for the work that he did with Algonquin to bring us to that level, to make sure that our students have those skills to go and take their ideas and build them into a small and medium-sized enterprise 
and stay in Ottawa. So here we are, and that's what we're going to be doing. But as you've heard today, there's other areas of this centre that are so important to us, so important to me here at Algonquin, and that is the entrepreneurship as it relates to our Indigenous peoples. For us to have an Executive Director of Truth and Reconciliation and Indigenization here at Algonquin means that this is important for us. And so we are committing to making sure that as not just a, an important thing to do, a moral imperative for Algonquin is to make sure that we are doing what we can to make truth and reconciliation um, happen in Canada. And we're vo very, very, uh, very important thing for us to do. So back to Algonquin. Let's just talk about some of that innovation and that uh, entrepreneurship here at Algonquin. You know, this ends our 50th uh, birthday, and we're having cake after this. I hope you can stay, and a big gala later on this, after, uh, this evening. We were born in Canada's centen centennial year. We now boast over 25,000 full-time and 41,000 part-time learners, all of them adventurous spirits encouraged from the moment they walk through our doors to achieve synergies of innovation and entrepreneurship. Let's just mention a few things that some of our daring students have done. This past year, our students won gold, silver, and bronze medals at the Skilled Trades and Technology Competitions in Toronto. And they're off again this weekend, and I know they'll make us proud. One of our alumni won an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for animation work that he did on the movie Zootopia. Last summer, we partnered with a local tech company to help save the world's honeybee population by helping to develop a device that allows us to look right into a productive hive. We recently started our first ever clinical tri trial so our students can contribute to the efforts to unlock the mysteries of dementia. Our learners have created 3D simulators that can transport you right now to other virtual dimensions, including a full tour of this facility long before we open the doors. We're building a new analytics center, data analytics center, right in this building, which will harness the power of big data. And organizations seeking support with big data technologies will now have a new resource and a partner in the college in Ottawa. We just opened a new partnership with the Ottawa Hospital, with the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute, and just a few days ago had an opening in our Applied Research Centre of their new M-Lab right here on our campus. Recently, we just won an award, a prestigious U.S. National Association Award for excellence in entrepreneurship at a, Canadian, at a, at a, at a North American community college. And not to be f forgotten, this our new D.A.R.E. district, the state-of-the-art facility that will become the heart of our college. Clearly, Algonquin is thriving, driving, and innovating in Ottawa. So let's just talk a little bit then about the traditional ter territory of the Algonquin people. I'm almost done. The Indigenous culture will be a thread that runs right through the D.A.R.E. district and also through all of our campuses. It will touch every learner, every employee and every visitor. We cannot, I cannot accept anything less than that. And I can't think of a worthier example of the continued re relevance and importance of the concept of, in, in, sorry, innovation. But indigenization, like the concept of innovation, reflects something that educators have come to recognize even more these days. We need to empower our learners and our educators. And we need to do that earlier on in, the, in their lives. We need to keep the flame of curiosity, that source of innovation, burning. You might have noticed I use the word learners a lot instead of students. This is my reason. In using the word learners, we emphasize the notion that the best kind of education is the one that involves all of us, not just our students, every one of us in this room. Education is not simply a matter of teaching impart, uh, teachers imparting knowledge to students, but of empowering all of our students to take ownership of their education and to feed that spark and passion throughout their lives. 
As our college mission statement has it, as we guide our students, they learn to transform hopes and dreams into lifelong success. We think that's a daring mission. We'd like everyone to think this is a daring mission for Algonquin. Thank you very much. Miigwech. I know that everybody just clapped, but can I just ask you to do one more round of applause for not only the best president I've ever worked for, but the best leader that I know, Cheryl Jensen. Next, it is my honor to introduce our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mayor of the City, His Worship, Jim Watson. Well, for those of you standing, I'm only going to speak 40 minutes, so I've cut it down in half. Uh, um, elders, uh, distinguished guests, uh, elected officials, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, uh, congratulations, Cheryl, and to the entire Algonquin team. This is a beautiful addition to an amazing institution that celebrated its 50th anniversary this year, or last year, rather, and we were honored to present Algonquin with, with the city's highest honor, the key to the city, but more importantly, Phase two of LRT is going to be right across the street, and it's going to bring thousands of people right here to Algonquin College. Alors, ça uh, I'm here not just as the mayor, but as a proud uncle of an Algonquin student. My niece, uh, um, Nicola, is studying here at Algonquin in the sports management program, and she loves it. Uh, but I just wanted to mention uh, the LRT because we have Lees here and Ottawa U and Carleton University. And uh, phase one, uh, exciting step tomorrow, I'm going to be joined by my colleagues and Minister Shirelli and uh, my MP Anita, and we're going to be laying the last spike of phase one. The last piece of rail is going to be laid down uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to dress up, I think, as Cornelius Van Horn and uh, back from the 1800s and uh, uh, hammer in the last spike. But I mention that because phase two of LRT, which will start early next year, is going to connect our post-secondary institutions like they've never been connected before because there's so much connectivity between the colleges and the universities. And we'll have a station uh, just across the street from Le Centre des Métiers in Orleans of La Cité, Ottawa U, Algonquin and Carleton. Will, students and staff and uh, employees will all be able to go to those four campuses uh, in a seamless system through the LRT system. And so to the uh, future students of Algonquin who are going to benefit from this beautiful building and from the LRT system, uh, this is a very great day for not just Algonquin, but for the city of Ottawa. Alors, certainement, c'est un plaisir pour moi de dire félicitations à Cheryl, à le conseil d'administration, toute l'équipe qui est responsable pour cet uh, édifice magnifique, and to all uh, who have donated, uh, our partners, uh, Bob and Anita, uh, your governments have been tremendous supporters of infrastructure for the post-secondary uh, community, the health sector, and certainly the municipal sector. And I'm very, very proud to be in this beautiful building to say thank you for a job well done, and to all of the students who have been great uh, supporters of this project, the student leaders of past and present. Uh, this is a very exciting day. This is a great wow moment for the great college uh, that we uh, are here celebrating today. And uh, to, uh, I know that we uh, showed the financial support of the federal and provincial government. We're not going to charge you property taxes. So thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Did you hear that? No property taxes. Great. Great. Where's, where's, our, where's our VP finance? Thank you, Mayor Watson. It's, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. And our, our next speaker is a very familiar face to most of us here at the college, and we consider ourselves very fortunate uh, to be able to say that. Although we like to call him the Minister of Algonquin, his real title is Minister Infrastructure of Infrastructure and MPP for Ottawa West Nepean. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Bob Shirelli.
Thank you very much, Laura, and good morning. Uh, bonjour à tous. Um, I want to start by acknowledging we're on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people, and I want to acknowledge the long history of First Nations and Métis people and to show respect to them today. Uh, I can tell you that over the last 30 years, I've been on and off this campus and in and out of the buildings, uh, and I never had a sense of feeling uh, and a sense of uh, spirituality, if you want to call it that, than when I first walked into this particular room. It's spectacular. All the creators, architects, builders, and uh, staff here, uh, I say thank you very much for what you've been able to create here. Uh, Jim, uh, we do kind of have something in common, okay? You talked about the last spike. I happen to have put the first spike in, okay, back then. <laughs> And uh, I also want to thank you uh, for the brevity of your speech, because I've added five minutes to my speech. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Algonquin College's mission is to transform hopes and dreams into lifelong success. And the D.A.R.E. District is helping the college accomplish this mission. It is no longer enough for students to graduate with practical skills. Now they must also leave the college with experience in creativity, problem solving, and collaboration. These are the skills that the D.A.R.E. District aims to instill in every learner. The D.A.R.E. District is preparing workers of the future. By encouraging exploration and entrepreneurship, Algonquin is making entrepreneurship a priority, and that's good for our community and our province. Indigenous culture will be found throughout the D.A.R.E. District. It will touch every learner employee, and visitor to Algonquin College. The college is following through on its commitment to truth and reconciliation. Thank you, Megwetch, for your unbelievable leadership. Thank you. And today is a day to celebrate. Algonquin College is marking the final celebration of its 50th anniversary year on the same day the D.A.R.E. District opens. It is a celebration of past, present, and future. It's a central part of the national capital region. And Algonquin continues to grow and change to reflect the needs of the Canadian workforce, and more particularly for the needs of Eastern Ontario and the Ottawa area. So thank you, President Jensen, for inviting us to celebrate the grand opening of D.A.R.E. District with you. I'm delighted to be here at Algonquin College once again. I also bring greetings from Premier Wynne and Minister Mitzi Hunter, and I know you've had the opportunity over the last couple of years to have significant meaningful engagement with them. I remember coming to Algonquin in October 2016 for the project's groundbreaking announcement with Ms. Minister McKenna and my federal counterpart, MP uh, Vandenbelt. And then again in April 2017, visiting with the Premier and hosting a town hall over at the ACE building where we announced funding of $2.9 million for this project as part of the province's 50th anniversary celebration. Algonquin, in turn, committed to use these funds to support the construction of new Indigenous commons and collaboratory that complemented the college's new innovation centre. We believe that everyone in Ontario, regardless of their background or circumstances, should be able to get the right skills to participate in the new economy. After all, our economy is transforming and will continue to change at an unprecedented pace. We've all seen it, we're all living it. And if we want to compete and succeed in this new economy, we need to build on our greatest strength, and that's our people, and we see that happening here at Algonquin. We're all better off when everyone has the support they need to reach their full potential. Our goal is to ensure students have access to high-quality post-secondary education based on their ability to learn, not their ability to pay. With the new OSAP, over 235,000 students are going to colleges and universities, just like this one, with their tuition completely 100% covered. Thank you. Thank you. And we're expanding eligibility for mature students, hugely beneficial to thousands of college students across the province, including here at Algonquin. And today is about more 
than a physical building. It's about providing students with access to experiences so they can make new discoveries. It is about building on Algonquin College's size, diversity, and partnerships to give students access to the best learning experience possible. As students, faculty, and alumni, you are a key part of our accelerated economic growth and long-term prosperity. You, in fact, are contributing to the forward development of the province of Ontario in this country in a very meaningful way, and thank you very much for what you're able to accomplish. But before I finish up, I would like to congratulate Algonquin College for being a leader in our province. Today, Algonquin is building on and reinforcing its unique culture and character of caring about every single student and the city and region it serves, of creating its own fun and excitement by being an innovator, by doing justice to its own name by engaging our Algonquin brothers and sisters and Indigenous communities, and by recognizing that character, maturity, and creativity is the brand on an Algonquin diploma. Thank you. Yawang Go. Thank you, Minister Shirelli. We're so happy that you're able to be here today. Uh, I'm going to go off script for just a sec, too, only to say that uh, it does my heart such, such good medicine to hear uh, even the word indigenous this many times in something like this. You know, out of all the things that we're doing here, $5.4 million have been put in to investing into uh, indigenous elements in placemaking. I just think that's fantastic. I'll just add one, one quick thing. Uh, you know, sometimes I think people get a little bit confused on what those will be and how that will work, and we'll figure all that out, but I want to, I'd like you to take away one, one thing for sure, and that these facilities, these assets, this investment will intersect, inform, and you know, really support all of our students. I have an elder uh, that I get to see every now and then, and sometimes the only way I can get her out of the house is to take her to the casino, <laughs> and so I'll go with. Uh, and she said, how's it going up in Ottawa? Uh, you know, we miss you down here at Grand River. And, she's, and I said, it's going really great. And her response was, keep up the good work. Don't forget that we're all indigenous. The only thing that separates us is time. Another great supporter of the college is Honorable Catherine McKenna, Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, and wanted to be here as well, but unfortunately her schedule did not permit this to happen. She did, however, send us a special message to celebrate the day. May I please ask you to play the video from Minister McKenna. Hi everyone, Catherine McKenna here, MP for Ottawa Centre and Minister of Environment and Climate Change. I wanted to send a huge congratulations to Algonquin College for the opening of the new DARE district. In addition to practical skills, it's very important for students to have experience with creativity and collaboration when you graduate. And those are the skills that DARE district will instill in every learner. Our government is also supporting students by creating up to 60,000 workplaces over the next five years so that students can gain experience and build valuable job skills that will help you get work. It's all about preparing youth for the future by encouraging exploration and entrepreneurship. Congratulations again to everyone involved in the new building and congratulations to Algonquin College on 50 awesome years. Looking forward to 50 more. As are we, as are we, 50 more. Here we come. That was a, a really lovely message from, uh, from the minister and uh, generous of her to take the time to do that. Uh, so thank you, Minister McKenna, wherever you are. Uh, and uh, speaking of videos, it's a little prompt for me. And before we move on, I just want to take a moment uh, to thank Baldwin's AV. Baldwin's AV, where are you people? I want to give a shout. Oh, there they are, right back in front of me. Hey, okay, welcome, welcome. Uh, Baldwin's has helped us with many of our major events, and uh, we're proud, uh, proud to, uh, to partner with them. And most notably, uh, they've been with us for 15 years at the Canadian Tire Centre as we do our convocation ceremonies. So I just want to say thank you for the strong partnership and support in making these events go so well.
Okay, our next speaker is also a very familiar face around the college, and we are so pleased she was able to adjust her schedule and get here before I even knew it uh, today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anita Vandenbelt, MP, Ottawa West, Nepean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Bienvenue tout le monde. It is so wonderful to be here in this incredible space. Uh, before I begin, I just wanted to say I started my career at the age of 12 in a library, putting away books. And I don't think I could have ever imagined what libraries of the future were going to look like. So this is fantastic. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Algonquin peoples for whom this college is named. I'd also like to bring greetings from Minister Navdeep Baines and Minister Kirsty Duncan. And also, you saw the greetings from uh, my colleague, Minister Catherine McKenna, who wasn't able to be here. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Jim Watson, Mayor Watson, and the uh, municipal colleagues, and my provincial counterpart, uh, Bob Shirelli, who you just heard from, who is a tremendous champion of Algonquin College. And in fact, the, just after I was elected, we went to uh, an announcement here at Algonquin College, and there was no federal money. But uh, I was there, and Bob said to me, okay, Anita, I challenge you. The next time we show up here together, you better be bringing a check. I think 21.9 million is not half bad. <laughs> so thanks, Bob. And of course, to Algonquin College and Cheryl Denson for uh, hosting us today. It is such an honor for me to be here today for the official opening of the new Discovery, Applied Research, and Entrepreneurship District, or DARE, and the Institute for Indig Indigenous Entrepreneurship. It is quite something to see, given that it was just a year and a half ago, as has been mentioned, that we were sitting here breaking the ground, and now we have this building, in fact, of the uh, Strategic Investment Fund, this is the very first building that is absolutely complete, on time and the very first one. So congratulations to Cheryl and to the college. As was mentioned, the funding for this comes from the Post-Secondary Strategic Investment Fund of the federal government for colleges and polytechnics and post-secondary institutions. It's a $2 billion fund to invest in infrastructure that will promote innovation, partnerships, and learning, tapping into the incredibly creative potential of our young people and to provide opportunities to grow our economy. And we are standing in a building today that displays state-of-the-art architecture of the future. En tant que député d'Ottawa West Nepean, j'ai été un témoin proche de l'engagement du Collège Algonquin à offrir un environnement d'apprentissage qui élargit le point de vue des étudiants et assure que les diplômés développent un sens aigu de la communauté et la société. Les diplômés acquièrent non seulement des compétences nécessaires pour entrer sur le marché du travail, mais ils partent avec un sens plus fort de la communauté et une conscience sociale qui les aide à contribuer positivement à la construction de notre société, de notre ville et de notre pays. The federal government provided $21.9 million for the completion of the DARE project, almost half of the total cost of the building. And I am very grateful to the province of Ontario, Bob Shirelli, and to all of the donors and the college itself for raising the other half. I'm very proud to have been involved in this project from the very concept stage, through to pushing for the funding and now to stand here in the completed building. And let me tell you just a little bit about how this project came to be from the federal side. I was here at Algonquin College. A student had invited me, in fact, to tour this 3D simulation lab. And as I walked in the building, Cheryl, in her wisdom, grabbed me, put me in a boardroom with all the other executives, and said, we hear that there's going to be infrastructure money for colleges. Can we talk about that? So before I even put on the 3D glasses and had a chance to tour, uh, we had a brainstorming session. And I talked to them about the priorities of the federal government, which was those words, innovation, entrepreneurship, job creation, economic growth, and indigenous communities and environment. And from that, I was so impressed the next time that Cheryl and I walked through what was the old library, and she described the project to me. And she looked up 
And I think at that moment, she could actually see this space in her mind. And when she said the word collaboratory, which is really what this is, a collaboratory, that's when she had me. And at that point, Catherine McKenna and I wrote to the ministers and we pushed very hard to make sure that this project was on the agenda to the point where Minister Kirsty Duncan, the Minister of Science, was, I caught her at one point in the bathroom and I said, I've got this great project for you. So by the way, one of the advantages of having 50% women in cabinet is that we can corner them in the bathroom too. <laughs> but it worked, it worked. One of the many reasons that I'm so proud of our government's almost $22 million in funding is because the DARE District Building creates a truly pan-collegiate model that will be a pilot for colleges across Canada. It is now home to a new library and learning centre, an Indigenous commons, a space for students to access the newest technology, a cyber security centre and more. From now on, learners at Algonquin College will have access to leading edge resources that will support their learning and help them explore new ideas and access the technology that they need to accomplish this. As I mentioned earlier, as part of this project, Algonquin College will be creating an institute for indigenous entrepreneurship. This is something that will help to stimulate the potential and creativity of Algonquin College's over 1,000 indigenous students. Even the physical design of this space features indigenous architecture. It is truly a welcoming and inclusive space. I have always said that the greatest resource of any democratic country are the combined knowledge, ideas, experiences, creativity of the people. This project allows us to unleash that creative potential. Notre objectif est de préparer chaque Canadien à l'innovation, c'est-à-dire prêt à découvrir de nouvelles idées à réparer des occasions et à imaginer de nouvelles possibilités. Algonquin College is already a center for world-class innovation, and I'm proud to be here today for the opening of the DARE District building. I congratulate Cheryl Jensen and the college for this remarkable success. I look forward to seeing just where this kind of investment takes our students, learners, community, city, and country. A place where we can all dare to dream. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, MP Vandenbel. Thank you for, for being there every step of the way in this project. We, we truly appreciate it. And thank you, Cheryl, for whisking her away to that boardroom. We all appreciate that as well. Um, as Cheryl mentioned in her remarks, the college mission is to transform hopes and dreams into lifelong success. And our next two uh, speakers here this morning represent all of those whom we've committed to this mission. And uh, this event wouldn't be complete until we heard from our le learners. So uh, it's my privilege to welcome the president of the Students Association from the 2017-18 year. Victoria Ventura. Welcome, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Victoria Ventura, and I am calling myself the outgoing president. Uh, I probably should be former, but they're having a hard time getting rid of me. Uh, and can you really blame me? <laughs> um, I am so excited to be here today uh, to see this building in, in its reality. Uh, I remember my predecessor, Igor, he got to be around, he got the shovel with his name on it for the groundbreaking, and um, I didn't get that shovel, but I missed that by a year, but I get to see the completed building, so I feel like that's a pretty fair compromise. Um, I said at the uh, name reveal event a couple of months ago that this building was going to become the heart of the Ottawa campus of Algonquin College, and seeing it today, um, walking into it, it it's, I just know that that is absolutely going to be the case. And I'm so excited for students to uh, come and be able to work and learn and, and enjoy it. But to speak more to uh, the student perspective and excitement, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker. Uh, she is the incoming, but really the current president of the Algonquin Students Association. She's speaking to this crowd of people on only the third day of her term, so please give a warm welcome to Ms. Dejanelle Simon. Thank 
Thank you, Victoria. Kowei. I am thrilled to be here today and to begin my leadership with this incredible event. As students, we have awaited this with great anticipation. We all appreciate our beautiful campuses that really are our second home. And this building will be no different. Algonquin's mission to transform hopes and dreams into lifelong success reflects its commitment to students and our success. As the new president of the Algonquin Student Association, I think I can speak for, on behalf of the students when I say that this building will be a great asset to continuing and to build on and fulfill our goals and aspirations. Our hopes and dreams that include learning in a place that encourages exploration and that supports us when we dare to fil fulfill our ambition. And more than that, our hopes and dreams include learning in a place that is inclusive and that furthers our understanding of our country's indigenous culture and history. It was for this reason that our Students Association wanted to support this initiative by investing one million in the art and architecture that will live in this building for everyone to enjoy and more importantly, to learn from. <laughs> On behalf of the students here at Algonquin, please accept our thanks to everyone who has had a hand in the creation of the D.A.R.E. District. This is a building that will most definitely be about discovery. But from, from today forward, it will also be very much about dreams of all the students who come here to learn. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you very much, Victoria. And thank you very much, Dejanel. Victoria, it's been, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure working with you this year. And we, we thank you very much for all you've done. And uh, Dejanel, welcome, and we know we've got an exciting year ahead. Uh, I'm actually uh, pinch hitting here now for, for Ron. He's, he's, he's there, but he may need to whisk away to do an interview about this wonderful facility. So, uh, so I'm just taking over his piece for a moment, even though he's, he's standing right there, but the, <laughs> the hook may come. Sorry, Ron, it feels a little odd. Do you want to come up? <laughs> Maybe just to acknowledge the fantastic relationship uh, that, that the college has with the Student Association, but also the, the, the relationship that I've developed, uh, Victoria, with you and the folks on the board. You know, it's been a really, um, it's been a really interesting learning experience, uh, a very lateral and mutually beneficial relationship. And I can't tell you how excited and how much pride uh, it gives me to talk to people about the amazing $1 million uh, gift that you folks gave to us uh, as your gesture towards truth and reconciliation. So many, well, one million thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ron. We also wanted to also thank our partners in this project, uh, Diamond Schmidt and Joint Ventures. Thank you for all you have done to make this project happen so, so beautifully. Um, well, uh, that's almost it for the, well, that's it for the speeches. I do have a little bit of wrap up to do. And thank you all who've been standing and haven't had a seat. And thank you to our students behind us. Sorry for all that standing, but we're almost there. Um, it, it's really, you know, the fun part, the ribbon cutting part, uh, and then for you to tour around afterwards. So may we please have the speakers back up on the stage for the official ribbon cutting to mark the opening of our, these wonderful new facilities. Is this working? Hello? Yeah, great. And while we have our speakers coming up and getting in place, and don't, please don't cut the ribbon until, uh, until we do the countdown. Strict, strict orders not to do that. I'd just like to mention, uh, while we were opening the D.A.R.E. District today, we still are working on the courtyard outside, and uh, we'll be excited to open the new Indigenous sharing spaces as planned in late August, so there'll be another ceremony for the courtyard coming up. So I thought I'd give those folks a plug uh, while we were lining up and looking at places for, uh, here we go. Okay, all right. Okay, this is where I need some audience participation. We need to uh, all count down together for the official ribbon cutting. Okay, everyone ready? Three, two, one. Woo! Okay, ribbon 
cut. Do we have all our ribbon cutting photos? All right. Thank you. All right, folks, we're almost there. I just have a tiny little bit of, uh, of wrap up to do here. I also want to let everyone know there's a little bit more exciting news. The Dare District will be featured as part of Doors Open Ottawa. Uh, tour on June 2nd and 3rd. Uh, Doors Open Ottawa is a free annual architectural event that celebrates our community's build heritage, and the DARE District is now officially part of that heritage. So we'd like to give our round of applause to that. Thank you, everyone. This is, uh, ends our official opening ceremony for the DARE District, and at this point, we would welcome everyone to roam around the building. We do have some self-guided tour handouts for you to navigate your way through the three floors of this space. And of course, we'll be moving on to our next celebration today, which is our 50th anniversary birthday bash. There's lots of activities and displays right here on this floor, um, and we hope you can visit and participate. There'll be some entertainment, a photo booth, memorabilia display. Ooh, that was a hard word at the end of all that talking. Some games, including pin the year on the building, and I know our retirees might enjoy that game. Uh, and AC trivia, tic-tac-toe, and somewhere, I don't know where, there'll be an illusionist. So um, we also have a movie room where there'll be a short video of the history of uh, the college and you will get popcorn, so there is a reward. And servers will be passing around some indigenous snacks, food stations will be open around 12.30 uh, at the far end of the room. So um, thank you very much. With that, I just want to say uh, thank you, merci, miigwech, and enjoy our facilities. <laughs>